In Lancaster County, just finding treasure locations isn't the only requirement to find gold. No, you gotta follow some of these superstitions. Here are some superstitions in Lancaster, Pennsylvania of finding gold along with tales of lost treasure. These superstitions are said to have origins in either Scott Irish or Pennsylvania Dutch ideas. And it makes it a lot more interesting. And if you were to find treasure doing these superstitions, I'd say it makes it a lot more rewarding, especially when you have to do it at night, which is one of the thoughts along with no talking while treasure hunting. Talking would ensure the likelihood of the treasure vanishing before your eyes. And don't forget the salt, salting each site exactly where the digging is done by taking salt and either spreading it all around or in a circle around the digging area. This is to prevent witches coming out and stealing your gold. Along with the salt, coffin nails would be held to ward off spirits that tend to do harm to a treasure hunter or steal the gold. One of the weirdest tactics that I read for finding gold was recorded back in 1870 in the local newspaper, The Lancaster Intelligencer. Two 10-year-old girls with a magic mirror called an Air de Spiegel, or Air de Spiegel, was used in the town of Intercourse, where treasure was said to be found. Still, till this day, it was never found though. And with those superstitions, we go on to our tales of lost treasure in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Now, I said we were going to do stories of lost treasure in Lancaster, PA, but this first one might not be in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but it is a really good story of treasure to tell. In 1884, two men by the names of Frank Lewis and Jacob Gearhart. At the time, there was an economic recession and these men found themselves out of employment. They found themselves making a living by digging for roots along the Susquehanna up in Augusta Township, Northumberland County. These roots back in the day were in very high demand in the pharmaceutical community for medical reasons. Eventually, Lewis caught information of an island in Danville, PA, and it was said to be filled with roots for their endeavors. That island was Crooks Riffles Island. It was uninhabited, filled with tons of vegetation that was ready to be rooted. On November 22, 1884, Lewis and Gearhart went to the island in a rowboat. Upon arriving, they started to dig in the dense forest of the islands to get their roots. While digging, they ended up hitting something dense with their shovels and pulled out an old rusted iron box. Both got really excited and started to hack at the lock with their pickaxes. Breaking open the box, the two dropped their jaw in astonishment to see Mexican silver dollars dating back to a very ancient time something that most people wish to find by accident too. They took the silver to an agent to see how much it may be worth. After hours of looking at the silver, the agent decided it was worth $47,000 back then. Now that would be worth 1.5 million in today's worth. After a while, rumors started to roll around that this trove was that of Captain Kidd's lost treasure. After being chased into the Susquehanna and eventually finding himself on Crooks Ruffles Island, where he buried his treasure. Proof was never found that it was Captain Kidd's treasure, or whether these two actually found silver, and it was likely a hoax, but still, it makes for a nice story. eighteen seventy when the weather was cold and winter was coming in rumors were spreading around the village of safe harbor in lancaster in the middle of the night there was a light being seen in the forest it was a lantern of some kind the one light soon began to be two then many they were seeing it commonly in the nights but never were spotted in the same area 
on either side of the Conestoga River, becoming an every night occurrence eventually. Curiosity got the best of the people in town, so they decided to check it out and what was going on. Yet the only evidence they found of what was going on was dug up holes with piles of dirt overturned next to them. So the villagers got more questions than answers. They wondered who it was and what were they searching for, and whatever it was must have been something really important, especially if they're going out in the cold of night in winter, digging up frozen dirt multiple times. Finally, when February came around, they got answers. It ended up being a bunch of treasure hunters looking for their fortune. Eventually, a reporter got word of what was going on and said their opinion about the treasure hunters. On February 5th, 1871, they wrote an article of the hunters in the Columbia Spy, naming it Foolish Fortune Hunters. Quote, A number of foolish people residing in and around Safe Harbor, this county, are almost nightly engaging in a fruitless search for buried gold and Wild Hill of opposite the Mansion House Hotel in that village. Everyone wondered how they got the idea that there was gold in that area. And then one hunter decided to spill the beans. A fortune teller that was in Columbia, Pennsylvania had given them a story about this treasure, where it came from, and where it can be found. If they were to find this treasure, it would be worth around four million at the time. Now, how did the treasure get there? According to the fortune teller, it was gold stolen from the French by Indians during the French Indian War. But finding it wasn't the only issue. The treasure was surrounded by a supernatural force. A seven foot tall Indian spirit would guard the treasure, changing the location of the gold nightly and then burying it. So this made it extremely difficult if the hunters were to get it. Now the last part of the ghost may have been a little far-fetched, but it was one of many treasure stories from that war. Someone recently discovered a rock along the Conestoga and Safe Harbor that rises some mystery. Maybe there's gold that it leads to. There is a carving in the rock that states 18 point 79 along with a finger pointing and digging tools and a compass. In a book called Conestoga River Watershed there was a writing about this rock asking whether it could be made by a pirate or someone else or that it could lead to treasure or could be a hidden mine. Still to this day no one knows about what exactly it means or what secret it holds. Maybe the fortune teller was right about there being gold. A writer by the name of Carl Kramer wrote about this story in his 1956 book called The Susquehanna. Kramer at the time was very well known in the 40s and the 50s. The story talks about a treasure located somewhere on the Turkey Hill above the river. Spanish gold, in fact. A man named Joe heard from the local indigenous people that there was hidden gold on top of the hill. But the ones telling this story didn't want anything to do with it because they said the treasure was said to be cursed. They also told Joe in order to receive the treasure, he was to sacrifice a white dog on the location and spread the dog's blood all around. And then the treasure would be revealed. He didn't believe any of this though, instead he got an investor to fund the expedition and convinced other hunters to come with him. But with his surprise, day after day of not finding any gold, he started to believe that the curse was real, thinking he might have to find a white dog. They looked all over the county for a white dog and found none. So instead he had the idea of getting a white lamb thinking it might do just as good. It didn't work, and Joe never found the treasure. So if the curse is true, and you're looking for that treasure, you might just have to find a white dog. But disclaimer, please don't sacrifice any dogs though, 
that's just not a good thing and it's illegal to do so. That's animal cruelty. I hope you enjoyed part one of these lost treasures in Lancaster. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe and click the notification button when you want to see videos when I post them. And if you like this video, give it a like button. The next one's coming pretty soon, so I'll see you then.